One billionaire gave witnesses $11 million so they wouldn't testify against him, while another billionaire hired laborers to dig an underground tunnel so he could escape from jail. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Billionaires are notorious for doing crazy things when they are confronted with their crimes. And a perfect example is the Colombian billionaire who made a ridiculous request when he was sentenced for drug trafficking. Instead of going to a standard prison, this billionaire wanted to build a luxurious five-star prison specially for himself. And surprisingly, the government allowed it. They gave him hundreds of acres of land to build his own prison. After months of negotiations, Pablo Escobar was flown by government helicopter to a comfortable jail in his hometown where some American authorities worry he could still run his business. But if the idea of a luxury prison sounds unbelievable, then brace yourself, because we have 10 more jaw-dropping stories of billionaire criminals who did insane things when faced with their crimes. But before we reveal the other billionaire criminals on our list, let's take a closer look at how luxurious the Colombian billionaire's prison was. In case you didn't know, we're talking about Pablo Escobar, who was worth about $30 billion. Pablo's prison had a king-sized bed, a kitchen, a private bathroom, a personal gym, a disco, a jacuzzi, a soccer field, a bar, and a waterfall. After building it, Escobar even handpicked his guards and threw parties inside the prison. And even though no other billionaire criminal has built a prison for themselves, they've done equally radical things. For instance, when billionaire Jeffrey Epstein was dragged to court in 2008, he blackmailed the most powerful men in America to keep him out of jail. But exactly what did he use to blackmail them? To answer that question, you'll have to understand why Epstein was in trouble in the first place. Billionaire criminal number 10 Jeffrey Epstein. I'm Jeffrey Edward Epstein, and my residence address is 6100 Red Hook Boulevard in Virgin Islands. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. Epstein's trouble started when people began to question the source of his wealth. Although he had a financial advisory firm, there was no proof that Epstein's financial services were actually the source of his billions. This triggered many speculations about exactly what Epstein did to get so rich. The biggest rumor was that Jeff ran a sex ring of underage girls for rich and powerful men. However, these remained mere speculations until 2006 when something unexpected happened. Jeffrey was dragged to court on charges of prostitution. But instead of this case showing that no one is above the law, it became proof that Jeffrey Epstein was untouchable. Despite all the evidence against him, Epstein walked away with a lenient plea deal where he was asked to spend 18 months in the private wing of a minimum security prison. Sources tell us that Epstein will likely report to a state prison with modern internet facilities so that he can do business from behind bars. It's been more than three years now since Palm Beach police started investigating Jeffrey Epstein. Reporter Connolly says money has bought him time. This case could have sent Epstein to jail for years. How on earth did he get off with barely any punishment? The answer is mind-boggling. Apparently, Epstein had a black book with damaging information about rich and powerful men in America. Sources claim Epstein had secretly recorded American politicians, judges, and CEOs doing nasty things with the girls he provided for them. So if they didn't protect him, those pictures from his black book would be released to the public. But though it seemed Epstein had evaded justice, an even bigger trouble was lurking in his future. About 10 years later, Epstein was in trouble with the law once again. But this time, the public interest in the case made it impossible for Epstein's powerful friends to save him. Epstein was arrested and detained. However, now that his powerful friends had abandoned him, everyone expected Epstein to release his black book and destroy the reputation of all these people. But the opposite happened. Before Epstein could reveal anything, he was found dead 
in his jail cell. But we start this hour with breaking news. Convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein died by suicide overnight in a Manhattan jail cell. The billionaire with ties to celebrities, socialites, and presidents was being held without bail pending a trial on child sex trafficking charges. On Friday, thousands of pages of documents were unsealed in federal court from a lawsuit filed by a woman who claims Epstein kept her. Even though it looked like he hanged himself, conspiracy theorists believe Epstein was assassinated to prevent him from leaking his black book. Void paying for his crimes, former billionaire Elizabeth Holmes used pregnancy to stay out of jail. Billionaire criminal number nine, Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes can be described as a bloody liar because she lied about inventing a machine that could perform hundreds of medical tests using only a few drops of blood. Investors pumped about $900 million into Holmes' company before realizing that she was lying. But when the time came to face the music, Elizabeth pulled some incredible stunts to weasel her way out of trouble. But of all the things she did, the worst thing was delaying her trial by intentionally getting pregnant. Right before the trial was scheduled to begin, Holmes announced her pregnancy, which led to a postponement. This pregnancy gave her lawyers additional time to prepare her defense. Thankfully, the jury saw through her lies. She was found guilty and sentenced to 11 years behind bars. But at times, sending a billionaire to jail is the easy part. Making them stay in jail is the hard part. Just ask Joaquin Guzman Luera, also known as El Chapo. This billionaire drug lord can write a book about escaping prison. Billionaire criminal number eight, El Chapo. For context, Joaquin Guzman was the head of the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most dangerous drug cartels in the world. But right at the height of his power, he was arrested. Although his billions couldn't keep him from going to jail, it could help him break out. His first escape happened in 2001, when he bribed his way out of a maximum security prison. He paid a guard to hide him in a laundry cart and wheel him out of the front gate. That first escape allegedly cost Guzman $2.5 million. Unfortunately, Guzman was recaptured and sent to another maximum security prison. But he didn't intend to stay long because his second escape was already in the works. Chicago has named him public enemy number one. Forbes calls him one of the richest men in the world. Well, tonight, drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman has a new title, fugitive, after breaking out of a Mexican prison for the second time. Here's Omar Villafranca. Guzman hired laborers to dig a tunnel that led directly from his prison cell to a house over a mile away. The underground tunnel was equipped with lighting, ventilation, and a cart to transport him through the tunnel. It was no surprise when investigations revealed Guzman had once again bribed prison officials and guards to allow him to escape. However, after many months on the run, Guzman was caught again, but this time he wasn't jailed in Mexico. He was extradited to America, where he was sentenced to life plus 30 years. But the most important thing they did was to strip Guzman of his billions by ordering him to pay $12.6 billion in forfeiture. Without his billions, Guzman will hopefully stay in jail. But while Guzman got into trouble for selling illegal drugs, our next billionaire got into hot water for selling legal prescription drugs. But the way he sold those drugs was so evil that Netflix made a movie about him. Billionaire criminal number seven, John Kapoor. In 1990, John Kapoor founded a pharmaceutical company called Insys Therapeutics. But instead of focusing on helping people, John was focused on making boatloads of money. Kapoor's company produced Subsys, a strong painkiller 50 times more powerful than heroin. 
Subsys was particularly dangerous because it contained fentanyl, which is highly addictive. To boost sales, Kapoor bribed doctors to prescribe Subsys to patients who didn't need such a powerful painkiller. Kapoor offered doctors boatloads of money, leading to a surge in prescription for Subsys. But even though pushing his drug made Kapoor incredibly wealthy, it created a devastating problem that no one could have predicted. A new study from the CDC found fentanyl-related deaths between 2011 and 2016 increased more than 1,000%. More than 36,000 Americans died with it in their system. Thousands of patients got addicted to fentanyl, leading to a rise in opioid-related deaths across America. And it wasn't difficult to find out which drugs were responsible for the situation. Insys Therapeutics is at the center of an alleged opioid kickback scheme in which doctors were bribed to prescribe a cancer painkiller to non-cancer patients. Today, federal authorities in Phoenix arrested the billionaire founder and majority owner of the company, John Kapoor. Kapoor was found guilty of racketeering to increase his company's profits and sentenced to five and a half years in prison. But at least John Kapoor was willing to go to jail. Other billionaires are so scared of serving time that they do the unthinkable. And that's the story of Robert Maxwell, a British businessman and billionaire. Billionaire criminal number six, Robert Maxwell. Rising from poverty, Maxwell built a media empire and became one of the richest men in Britain. However, being a billionaire didn't prevent him from becoming a criminal. American business ethics do not exist. In business, apparently, you've got to assume right from the beginning that you're dealing with people who have got the morals of barnyard roosters. And you better have good lawyers and large resorts and be on your guard. Critics of Maxwell's unorthodox business practices say they're wary of him for similar reasons. Nevertheless, flamboyant, charming, some say ruthless, Maxwell remains one of Britain's most famous adopted sons. He travels in his own yacht, owns a soccer team, publishes six newspapers including the powerful British tabloid The Daily Mirror. Maxwell's descent into crime began when his businesses hit a rough patch. But instead of filing for bankruptcy, Maxwell decided to steal from his employees' retirement funds. For years, Maxwell withdrew hundreds of millions of pounds from the pension funds to fund his lavish lifestyle, throwing expensive parties and buying flashy cars. But it was only a matter of time before he was discovered. That day of reckoning arrived in 1991, when Maxwell's employees began to notice the missing funds. So how did he fix the problem? On a beautiful day, right before the scandal was about to explode, Maxwell took a trip in his yacht. He had a few servants with him as he sailed off into the ocean. The next morning, the servants woke up to discover Maxwell wasn't on the yacht. They searched for hours and couldn't find him. How could a man disappear from a yacht in the middle of the ocean? But they didn't have to wonder for long. A few days later, someone found Maxwell's naked body floating in the ocean. He was dead. After his death, his bankers called in their loans, and the truth about the pension fund looting was revealed. Maxwell's mysterious death triggered thousands of questions. Some say he accidentally fell off the boat. Others believe he was assassinated. But the most likely explanation was obvious. The billionaire criminal had ended his life to avoid punishment. Maxwell knew that the game was up. From He was on board his yacht, the Lady Ghislaine, where he died. That when he went back, he was due to fly back to London that morning, that he was going to effectively face three firing squads. He knew the fraud squad were after him, the mirror pensioners were after him, and the banks were after him. So if it was an accident, in many respects, it was a very fortuitous accident. Robert Maxwell didn't even put up a fight. Italian billionaire Silvio Berlusconi, on the other hand, 
was willing to do anything to stay out of jail, including bribing witnesses with $11 million so they wouldn't testify against him. E poi nella vita non c'è niente di più complicato, di cose complicate io ne ho viste tantissime. E ne sono sempre uscito benissimo. Prego. Billionaire criminal number five, Silvio Berlusconi. Silvio Berlusconi wasn't a regular billionaire. He was also the Prime Minister of Italy. Italians made Berlusconi their Prime Minister because they'd hoped he'd use his business acumen to improve the country's economy. But their hope was quickly dashed when the Prime Minister was more interested in causing scandals than boosting the economy. The papers have replaced headlines about Italy's dire economy with transcripts of Berlusconi's tapped conversations with a businessman who's accused of supplying him with prostitutes. Berlusconi faced over a dozen charges throughout his political career, with accusations ranging from embezzlement to tax fraud. But it got worse from there. Berlusconi was also accused of attempting to bribe witnesses to not testify against him. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has appeared in court in Milan for a corruption trial, one of several cases he's involved in. It resumes as further reports of parties and young women have called into question his suitability for governing the country. Berlusconi's troubles never stopped coming. He was accused of funneling hundreds of millions of dollars through offshore companies to avoid paying taxes. Of course, Berlusconi denied the charges, claiming it was a political witch hunt. He spent millions of dollars to hire the best lawyers to defend him. Even though he won some cases, Berlusconi was ultimately found guilty of tax fraud. Because of his age, he wasn't sent to prison, but instead served his sentence by doing unpaid community service. But while Berlusconi tried to use money to silence witnesses, Crypto billionaire Sam Bankman Fried used a more brutal tactic to discourage people from testifying against him. Billionaire criminal number four, Sam Bankman Fried. I'm very excited to introduce you to Sam Bankman Fried. Sam Bankman Fried was the poster boy for the crypto revolution. In 2019, Sam started a company called FTX, a platform where people could buy and sell cryptocurrency. And thanks to FTX, Sam amassed a fortune of about $26 billion within three years. But behind Sam's good boy image were some dark secrets. Sam owned another business called Alameda Research, which was involved in cryptocurrency trading. Sam would illegally take customers' deposits from FTX and give them to Alameda to make trades. Alameda was really bad at trading and lost billions of dollars. And if losing billions of dollars wasn't bad enough, the CEO of Alameda was Sam's girlfriend, Caroline Ellison. When Sam was taken to court, his actions there added to the already terrible situation. Right before the trial, Sam discovered that his ex-girlfriend and Alameda CEO, Caroline, was cooperating with the prosecution. And so he decided to discredit her testimony by leaking her diary to the press. Caroline eventually testified against Sam, and it was bad. Face to face in this Manhattan courthouse with his former girlfriend and ex-business partner, Caroline Ellison, for the first time since he allegedly leaked her personal diaries to the New York Times. 28-year-old Ellison taking the stand as part of her own guilty plea deal with federal prosecutors telling the court she committed crimes with Bankman Freed and admitting crypto hedge fund Alameda Research took around $14 billion of FTX customer money. The jury found Sam guilty of fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. He now faces a maximum sentence of 115 years in prison. But Sam isn't the only billionaire who could spend over 100 years in jail. Alan Stanford, a man who was once worth $2 billion, is currently serving a 110-year prison sentence. And if you knew the crime he committed, you might think 110 years in jail is too short. Billionaire criminal number three, Alan Stanford. Alan started the Stanford International Bank and lured people into investing their life savings with him. Stanford promised higher than market returns on any investment and actually delivered. People were amazed at how much they were making by investing with Stanford. It seemed too good to be true. 
Instead of a safe haven for investments, the Stanford International Bank was a house of fraud. Alan Stanford used new investments to pay returns to earlier investors, which is a typical Ponzi scheme. Stanford splashed his ill-gotten wealth on yachts, mansions, and extravagant parties. By 2009, authorities began an investigation into Stanford's fraudulent activities. Like the other billionaires on this list, Stanford wasn't going to give up without a fight. To prevent them from uncovering his fraud, Stanford bribed whoever could help him falsify financial records. However, that wasn't enough to keep his house of cards from falling. Stanford is accused of running what used to be called a Ponzi scheme, but is now better characterized as a Madoff scheme. Eight billion dollars disappeared, according to earlier government allegations. They are allegations Stanford denied in tears when I asked him about it earlier this year. In 2012, Stanford was sentenced to 110 years behind bars and ordered to pay a personal money judgment of $5.9 billion to his victims. While Alan Stanford was aware that he was breaking the law, billionaire Jamie Botin didn't realize he was committing a crime. Billionaire criminal number two, Jamie Botin. Jamie Botin owned a Picasso painting worth about $27 million. He could afford expensive paintings because he was a billionaire. However, it's what Botin did with the painting that got him into trouble. In 2015, Botin hopped on his yacht and set sail for Switzerland. Along his journey, French custom officers boarded the vessel for a routine inspection. That's when they discovered the Picasso painting carefully hidden on the yacht. And that was his crime. Even though Botin owned the Picasso painting, it's regarded as a national treasure in Spain. This means the painting can't be taken out of Spain without official permission. So, technically, Botin had committed a crime by crossing the border with his own property. French customs officials have seized a Picasso painting worth 25 million euros from a boat moored in the Corsican port of Calvi. There were concerns that it could be permanently removed from Spain in defiance of an export ban. The 1906 head of a young woman has been impounded. In his defense, Botin claimed he was merely transporting it to Switzerland for safekeeping. But prosecutors had another explanation. They accused him of smuggling the Picasso so he could sell it abroad. And after intense legal battle, Botin was fined 91.7 million euros and sentenced to three years in prison. Billionaire criminal number one, Isabel Dos Santos. The next billionaire, Isabel Dos Santos, once held the title of Africa's richest woman. She had a net worth of $1.4 billion. But instead of people being impressed by her achievement as a woman, they said she didn't deserve it. Why? Because Isabel's dad was the former president of Angola. It was obvious she used her family's political influence to amass a vast fortune. But no one had any proof. That was until 2020, when a collection of leaked documents revealed how Isabel siphoned hundreds of millions of dollars from state-owned companies into her own businesses. Those documents also implicated her in money laundering schemes, using offshore companies to hide her assets and moving money across borders. This is the woman at the center of an investigation dubbed the Luanda Leaks. Isabel dos Santos, the daughter of Angola's former president, a billionaire and Africa's richest woman. Success, she argues, is self-made. But a group of journalists say documents prove she ripped off her country to enrich herself. Of course, Isabel dos Santos denied it all, calling it political persecution. Countries around the world froze her assets and began legal action against her. Billionaires get into trouble all the time, and their money is the first thing they lose when they're convicted. That's why the rich have devised secret schemes to hide their money all over the world. To discover how the rich hide their money, watch this video next.